uh, there's nothing on this fucking sheet of paper, so I don't know why I'm looking at it. Oh, I fucking hate intros so much. They're so hard. Let's Let's fucking get right into the news. All right. Hello, and welcome to The Woodshed. I'm your host, Andy Brent. Today we're going to be discussing some gig stories with Wyatt and Race. Uh, you guys met them in the last episode. Anyway, our outro this week is going to be by Odd Soul. And uh, it's going to be, their track name is Movies. Uh, which is also the name of their debut EP. So that's Movies. They're a group from Birmingham, UK. And you know, I talked shit about Neo Soul on episode 2. But these guys changed my mind. I, I listened to this. You know, I said I had all exams this week. And I was like, yo, I, I can just preview it now. And then I'll listen to the rest later. But once I start, I'm not. And I'm not. You know, I'm a real honest guy. I'm not making shit up. Not just to, you know, promote them. But I, I listened to it and I couldn't stop listening. It was fucking great. They have excellent rhythm. Their band is fucking tight. Like, tight, 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 tight rhythms real good uh vocals are amazing the whole album is pretty diverse so i'd highly recommend checking them out and giving them some love that's odd soul with their album of movies all right so who wants who wants to start with their i mean i guess i can start i'll, I'll say my small go for it, my Andy. small gig um <clears throat> so i the and if you're listening, you know who you are, and I, I give you all my love, but I had a friend uh, in the band. In the Mar- I'm part of the March band, if everyone didn't know. Yay. Go Buffs. Uh, wish I was in the jazz band. I was. Anyway, so my friend comes up to me. He, we're both trumpet players, and he's like, yo, you want to you wanna join my group? And I was like, yeah, I want to fucking make some music. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm setting up a ska band. And I was like, okay, yeah. I, I'll play ska. I mean, whatever gets me more exposure and experience. I was like, dude, they got, yeah, hit me up. So a couple, <laughs> a couple months pass. He comes back to me. He's like, dude, you want to, I still have that band off. Or you want to join? I was like, oh yeah, I was just waiting for you to hit me up. I was like, it's a ska band, right? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's a metal ska band. And I was like, wow. Ooh, okay. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't deterred yet. I was like, you know, I could maybe bring my bass. I get some good practice on that. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hit me up. <laughs> Another month goes by. This motherfucker comes up to me. I love you, man. He comes up to me. He says, dude, you want to join my group? I was like, yeah. And he's like, he's, I was like, it's a, it's a metal ska, right? And he's like, no, it's, it's pirate metal ska. And I was like, what? Oh. <laughs> I think, I think that is like, I think that may be the ultimate meme genre of music. (laughs) Like pirate metal ska. That's so specific. Maybe if you made like pirate metal ska wave, that would be a more meme genre (laughs) of music. I'm not sure how you would really properly top that though. That's impressive. Yeah, we're gonna play some uh, country uh, Celtic folk rock. Oh hell it's yeah! It's gonna be great. Uh, f- Throw a little dubstep trance music. Oh but, yeah, it's gonna be great. But it reminds me of like I think Andrew Huang or Huang or Wang, whatever his name yeah, is, yeah, yeah. with that half red-haired <laughs> dude. They made a song called like genre. I don't know. It goes through all these genres, and I'm pretty sure like there was a pirate genre in that. I'm almost certain, but yeah, it seems really specific. It reminds me of that one band. Who's the one that, uh, the, I'm climbing up the top sails. <laughs> yeah, he lost, he lost his leg. You guys know what I'm, I'm talking sure about? I'm not sure I know song? what you're talking about. No. Gosh, who is it? It's, that's, <laughs> that's know. like, that's like pirate rock or it's not pirate rock. It's like Scottish or Irish. I don't know accents. Uh, anyway, someone knows what I'm talking about. He lost his leg. So, I'm shipping up to Boston. Uh, I can't Is remember. that the name of the song? I yeah, it's no not idea. jazz, so. Definitely not jazz. Anyway, um, uh, I, th- I think that's that's the end of that <laughs> that story. I that never was... never got into that band. Um, I have I have something funny about okay. pirates. Um, so 
at my college we have two jazz men. Well, technically we have three, but we have two main yeah. big ones. Um, one is just called Jazz One, and then Jazz Two is directed by this classical trumpet player, mm-hmm. and <laughs> he's our trumpet professor, and he's like pretty old, and he knows a lot about like trumpet and classical stuff, but he basically knows nothing about jazz like at all. But he acts like he does. So, what was he saying? He's like. There's two types of music in this world. There's either love music, so like love songs and everything, and the other is pirate music. <laughs> love like, I don't songs even... <laughs> and... Yeah, literally, that's what he boiled it down to. He's like, you either got love songs or pirate songs. There's no <laughs> difference. It's either the one or the other. He's also like, you know, 95% of jazz is all swing music. Wow. And I'm like, Wow! All right, nice. <laughs> it's, it's pretty astute. Yeah, he's he's basically kind of a a, a dingus. Kind of a say. Whitmar dingus. Yeah, I I don't really know. He's he's really weird. I I'm really happy I don't have to be in his band. Let's just say that much. Sounds like my high school band director. Wyatt, do you want to? <laughs> Literally sounds exactly like my high school. Oh, band director. dude. Besides the point. Do you want to go into your Yeah, gig sure. Story? So I, I had a couple. Here's my first one was um this was when we tried to play jazz at a at a at a blues gig. Um I was playing bass on on this gig and we were hosting a jam at a restaurant in downtown Colorado Springs, a blues jam straight ahead traditional blues you know no no jazz involved here and i would bring my bass and bring my saxophone and kind of just fuck around and um this drummer who was playing at the time who was sitting in at the time is like 16 years old and he's pretty good you know and he likes to play jazz and we were playing little wing by Jimi hendrix that was the song that we were playing and it just ended up being the same thing over and over, you know, with like four guitarists on the stage all kind of soloing in the exact Jamming same up. way, you know, <laughs> and it was just the same thing over and over this form over and over. Nobody was giving anybody else anything. There was no development going on. And I, I turned to the drummer and I said, I'm fucking bored. And he goes double, he says double time swing top of the next chorus. I said, okay. <laughs> and like the song is slow One, two three four you know that's like the tempo of the song it's pretty slow but we go into this double time swing and everyone except us was immediately lost it was terrible it was the worst possible thing and when you have these four blues guitarists that like they get lost but instead of stopping and listening and trying to get back in somewhere they just keep playing you know and we ended up oh god it was terrible and we ended up coming back into the initial groove eventually on like the third chord or something but it was it was so impressive how instantly confused everybody became and like the house band guitar player wasn't on the stage you know and none of the like really really super good musicians were on the stage it was that was some shit so they were all like cats who they're all like uh cats who like can't really like read oh, music no. or like they only like God, do no. like casual like nobody like nobody that in that band yeah, could okay. read a chart i mean i can i can read charts obviously i'm not very good at reading on bass or sight transposing or anything but Nobody in that band except me and the drummer, probably, but he's just like a, like the really good high school jazz band drummer, you know, that kind of guy. He could probably That's read hilarious. sheets, but no, none of these guys <laughs> read sheets. They're all into the traditional blues guitar, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Hendrix thing. Not traditional. So were they guitar, like but... playing it all straight too? Did they like swing unintentionally, or were they just like playing everything super straight? I as don't well? even know. Honestly, I don't even know what the what they happened. <laughs> it fell apart after like a bar. 
It was actually incredible. Jesus. Yeah, you just gotta fucking feel it, man. Xavier just said in the Discord chat. You just gotta fucking feel it, man. That's basically what they all say. <laughs> you just gotta do it, man. Just feel it. Um, so, for my story, or one of my stories, um, it's jam-related as well. So, in my... So, I'm from Fargo, North Dakota. It's uh, about 100,000 people in the area. And there isn't really that big of a jazz scene. Like, we don't have weekly jams or anything <laughs> you have like yearly that. Jams. We had monthly <laughs> jams. Yeah, we literally basically, like, yearly jams. So, basically, um, there was uh, this combo at one of the colleges nearby or in the area that was, like, doing a jam once a month for, like, the first semester of college. And so... Once that was done, I was like, oh, man, that was really cool. I want to get that back together, get that started, because it was at, like, some coffee shop downtown. And so I get my combo together, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to host a, host a jam in, like, May once we get out of school, because I go to private school and we get off, like, yeah. a month early. So we contact the place. We get it scheduled and everything. It's, like, the regular day that the other jams was, was on, because I think that was, like, a Sunday night or something. So it's kind of weird, but, like, there were people that usually came to the other ones. So I invited everybody. I made, like, a Facebook event and everything. And literally no musicians I knew show up, showed up at <laughs> all, like, in the area. Like, it was so weird. It was basically just my combo jamming out to, like, some random people who were like, why is there music here at this coffee shop? I was not expecting this. And except for there was, like, this one kid here like he was he was in high school i think like early high school he had like not like a moog but it was like a mini keyboard like yeah. that kind of deal and he brought like a shitty little amp and so we we're like oh hey actually someone who has an instrument that's pretty cool never seen this kid before in my life i just assume maybe he can shred on this tiny little piano mm -hmm. so he comes up there we give him, like, a, like, we find, like, a stand or something and just, like, put his keyboard on a stand and, like, plug it in. And he doesn't know how to read music at all. He doesn't even know what keys are or anything. Hey, it's like me. So we're like, oh, fuck, what are we going to do with hey, this kid like now? it's like every singer like, at every jam. <laughs> Literally, yeah. And we're like, you don't need, like, jazz tunes at all? And he's like, no. He's like, but I write a little bit. We're like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, let's, uh, we could, like, maybe try and play one of your tunes or something, like, what is it, what's the form, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh, uh, I don't know, I just kind of play this little motif, and he plays, like, this, like, one, four, five, one, like, he plays the, like, super <laughs> just the basic, lake. like, yeah, it's like, it's like, goo, 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 I don't know, jazz. something like that, that's and we're like, jazz. oh. That's, like, yeah, some, no, that's some, like, not, dance no, beat from the 90s. It sounded, yeah, it sounded like some, and he was using this, like, keyboard. Yes. It was fucking Sandstorm. Yes. All along, the it whole time, it was Sandstorm. No, but he was using, it, it sounded like, almost like an 8-bit kind of, like, yeah. patch on his keyboard or whatever. And so we we're like, oh, okay, so I, I figured out the key on my horn by, like, just kind of, like, turning around and, like, playing a little bit. And so then we just kind of improvised and, like, played a drum beat. And then next thing we know, like 10 minutes pass on the exact same fucking thing. It's so annoying. This kid like will not end the tune. Like we kept, we tried ending it like three separate times, but he just kept playing the That's same like the, thing on it's his like, piano. You know what it probably was? It, it was might have so been the weird. keyboard cap thing. <laughs> it wasn't that. I would have recognized. It was definitely something that was like kind of cool, but like it didn't yeah. get developed at all. Um... And, like, we even had him solo a little bit, and it was, like, oh, God. It was, like, a cat walking on top of a keyboard for a little bit there. It was in, it was just, like, all right, man. And then we're, we had to somehow figure out how to get him off the, off <laughs> you're the like stage. Making, you're, like, like making a plan in the background. I can see you guys, like, in the corner all, like, talking to each other. Like, how the fuck do we get this guy to stop? And you're, like, what all are we going to do your now? Chins. Fuck. Yeah, that literally... Like, when he was soloing, I walk over, and I was like, uh, what are we gonna do? <laughs> so, we, I think we, like, played a blues next or something. I'm like, do you know what a blues is? And he's like, oh, no, a blues is. I'm like, all right, cool. Nice. Uh, we're gonna play this. 
we're gonna play a blues and F, okay? Do you know what F is? It's and he's like, I think yeah. So I like I showed him on the keyboard. I was like, we're gonna do that, <laughs> and you can solo if How you want. So we play kid? like Sunny Moon for two. He is like a sophomore in high school. Has got to be a sophomore mm. or junior or something at this point. And I'm like, I think this was last year. Yeah, I was, I was a sophomore in college, I think. Um, and we were playing. And again, it was basically the exact same thing over and over again. Like he he like ended his solo in the middle of the form, and it was just like, oh god. So we eventually were like, hey man, we're gonna play a couple tunes on our own, and maybe we'll bring you back up here. Okay, cool, bye. And so that was it. It was basically just us playing for the rest of the night. And my experience, <laughs> so if weird. you're struggling to get someone to leave the stage, what I've done in the past is just call Cherokee and then count it off. You know, and then they get scared because <laughs> if they're, you know, yeah, I could have done that. Just be like, all right, we're going to play something totally different. We're going to play rhythm changes. One, two, one, <laughs> yeah. two, three, four, go. Salt peanuts, salt peanuts. Uh, <laughs> a two, a one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like really fucking fast. <laughs> yeah, got it off as like one, two. One, two. I one, used two, to be four. able to do this thing where I, I can't do it anymore, but I used to be like one, two, one, two. It was like, oh gosh, it was like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Ah, 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 ah. And just. <laughs> and then it turns into the first circle. Ba, na, 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 slam na, into seven. Eight. Anybody know that Pat Metheny chart? Or, no, that's what you should do. You should oh, be like one, two, what do you guys think about um people who count off charts like a one a three a one two, i will three, vibe four. you <laughs> what do you think about that i will vibe you instead of one and two three instead of one uh one of my uh open at them I mean, technically, it's Well, and if, like, right, you're counting I off guess, an up-tempo cause... tune, the right way to do that would be one. 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 Three. One, two, three, four. That's just... That just sounds so bad. You don't do exactly. that. Exactly. It sounds you stupid. don't do that. I love... Don Ellis will just sometimes just... Oh, no, it's not... Well, Don Ellis also does that. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, third third podcast in a row <laughs> but dizzy Ellis gang 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 okay I'll stop now sorry just so everyone knows uh spring break's coming up for Wyatt and I and I'm going I'm flying out of the state today so uh my roommate's already gone so I can't fucking use his mic so uh Wyatt and I are using the same mic and we're just in my bedroom and it's just like a fucking tiny desk concert in here so whenever he speaks I can't even really speak that much it's Uh, literally a tiny desk anyway no what I want I what I love is like when people Dizzy does this for some uh Manteca recordings but he'll just Ah! <laughs> and, then, and then it just starts. <laughs> oh yeah, he just screams yeah, at I his love band. That yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Don Ellis has also done that, or he just says random like, ah, syllables, ah, ah, ah. or counts off in four, no. and then it's in fucking like seventeen. Uh, well, and then some. Well, sometimes you need to say you random to that, syllables yeah. because you're you're putting a mouthpiece in your mouth to play the note that comes in on beat one of the tune. You know, what? really the most yeah, my professor the most that patrician the way to count off a tune is just to play an intro over like the last eight bars of the tune or something and then just let the rest of the band come in. That's what that's what I try to do more often than not nowadays when I know like the rhythm section knows what they're doing. I once played uh, Bugle Call Rag, you know, the and fucking... Um, oh yeah, I know that too. My 100%. friend, I showed him like uh, a Doc Severson recording, and he goes, "A one, a two, a skiddly doodly do." Oh no, that's that's in the mood he does that for. But anyway, uh, <laughs> a skiddly doodly Yeah, it's like a one, a two, a skiddly doodly do. And um, I showed that to him, and he's like, "Go, oh, I'm gonna tell the the director we should actually count it off this way." I was like. I was like, no, please don't do that, no. Please, no. And uh, we did that, and I fucking don't hated do myself. This, please. It was bad. <laughs> my, my favorite I've heard is is still, 
a、uh, one uh, and uh, two uh, and uh, ready and uh, go e and.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my high school band. That、director. reminds me. <laughs> that, re- that reminds me of the somebody、yeah, touch a my spaghetti. Touch a my spaghetti. Totally.、Um, I actually do have another story I just thought of. So, a couple years ago, when I was、uh, actually in a jazz band and studying jazz instead of whatever the fuck I do now, studying, studying memes and <gasps> neurology,、um, I fucking.、Uh, I went to this bar and I wasn't supposed to go there, but shh. And、uh, they, they let me play. And there is, it was, it was a jam session, so there were a few regulars there. And there's this kid with like, he's really tall. He was also a trauma player, glasses and long hair. And we were playing like Blueberry Hill or something. Was it <laughs> no, Wyatt? I remember. I've never was, played a trumpet in my life. It was like in like E or something or something. Whatever. Yeah, it was a fucking, strange key. It was fucking awful. And. Concert E or well, your E?、Uh, I fucking. I still. Let's see. Yeah, it was e, so it's my F sharp. So I fucking died.、Um, yeah, yeah. But、uh, yeah. especially when I was in high school, I was like, this key isn't real. That's, we just ignore that key. Anyway, the.、Uh, you know, I, I play whatever <laughs> and I do a shit job. I mean, whatever. And this guy comes up. And if anyone's ever been in fucking marching bands, you know what marking time looks like, where you lift your heels in time with the beat and, sl- and slam them down to the ground? He fucking marked time during his f- entire fucking solo. And his, like, he was super stiff. And it was one of the most uncomfortable. I just watched his fucking feet the whole time. And just, it was the、Holy、worst shit. fucking shit I've ever seen. That was bad. So, was it like that, uh, uh, Tambourine slash trumpet player, we were、it's、talking、like、about last week. It's the exact、podcast. opposite of that. Where he's like distracting exact, you. He, he, oh, so he wasn't so distracting you. He's so stiff. <laughs> and then、uh, also, I got done with the jam, and the singer comes over to me, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm back. Andy, are you okay? That's what, he, that's what he sounds like. He was like, yeah, man, I, saw, I, got, you know, I kept my marriage together. I was like, I don't really care, man. He's like, yeah. I'm always right. And he <laughs> looks at his, his wife and she just gives two thumbs up and he's like, Yeah, man. <laughs> Have a good night. And he pushes me out of the fucking restaurant. Like, Where the hell was this? I don't want to say it because it's still open, but it was, a, it was in Arizona. It was fucking weird. Wow. But, and the, it was so.、Wow. It was creepy, man. It's like this guy. It's like the guru who is kind of crazy. Like. Imagine, like, a bass guru like, that's in guitars, Guitar Center or something, and they just bring him out when they need, like, super niche expertise. He had, like, really long, wiry hair, and he's kind of <laughs> overweight, and he's like, Yeah, yeah, I know. You can, I got the perfect gauge for you. Yeah. <laughs> and he, like, r- rips out one of his hairs, and like, Yeah, this will work perfectly for your bass. It was, like, that creepy, weird dude that they just pull out. It was, it was strange. I don't think I've ever had that experience at Guitar Center. Oh, you have? I don't think I've, I've ever had the experience of having an extra dude come out of the back to help、yeah. me. I think I could see it happening. I've never personally seen that.、Though. Yeah, no, it happens every time I fucking go there. The really cool thing is that we don't even have anything like a guitar. I mean, the nearest, one to, the nearest one to、What、Andy a- and I is like 20, 25 minutes yeah, drive away. Yeah, it's pretty far. In Westminster. And the nearest one to me when I'm in.、Um, There's also one in Long Island. When I'm at home is like over an hour away. You know? Um, I guess I can tell one of my、Go、stories for it. too.、Uh, so. Two? You already told one. <laughs> so. Oh, do you not want me to? No, I'm I saying. I, I don't know why. You, no, just, just. Hey, don't, 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 don't race to conclusions. Oh my god, get out of here. Don't even talk to me. <laughs> no, no, that's not. That's not what I meant. Just ignore me. We'll cut it. We'll cut it. It's fine. We'll do it now. Okay. Race, don't talk to my. Race, don't talk to me or my son's dog ever again. <laughs> yo, race, you can. Yo, race, you can fucking、okay. suck my toes. Snort me. Snort me. Guys, rule two. You, This is rule, rule two. two. <laughs> Andy, rule two. First I ban- warning. I will ban you. Andy. Please report I, Andy, Andy Brent. Brent Andy Brent violated、oh、rule two in the podcast.
<laughs> you can't ban the banner. You can't ban you the can't banner. Ban Bruce Banner. All right. Um. So, this. Okay. <laughs> so, my professor, he gigs like all the time, and he does this weekly like, uh, sort of like chill gig at this hotel restaurant. Um, every Thursday night or so they play there his like combo um and like his philosophy or whatever is like if you're a student of his bring your horn to the gig and maybe he'll let you sit in or whatever <laughs> maybe so this is like the yeah <laughs> this is like after i had a year of taking lessons with them this is where i've only been playing saxophone for like a year i think i was like a junior in high school and i i get in there and like i'm pretty good at saxophone in my mind like i can I'm better than everybody in my high school, at least, at the moment, and I'm like, okay, cool, I can play high altissimo notes, and I can sort of play in the right key at certain times. So, basically, it's me and these two other tenor saxophone students who are, like, in fucking eighth grade. So, one of them is is, is uh, my professor's students, who I know, and I'm like, he's pretty okay. And then uh, his friend, who I've never seen before, who's playing on, like, a Yamaha... Uh, 62 with like a Yamaha 5C mouthpiece so we're playing take the A train and it's super chill whatever we get through the head and I take my first solo and it's like okay I throw in some altissimo A's and then sort of play the changes cause like at the time I didn't really know how I was just like oh G that means I'm in G major you know and so not playing I get done with my solo <laughs> not playing the take to a, the A train tag starting on altissimo D who even are you race who do you <laughs> think you are anyway <laughs> so the um the other student whatever who's in 8th grade plays that I know and like it's ex- it's what I expect and then his buddy starts playing and holy fuck he's like better than me and he's in 8th grade he's like weaving through the changes like really nicely but the only downside is he's playing is his playing is like really quiet and he's playing on like a 5c and he sounds like his tone is awesome and i was just like blown away i was like awesome sweet i need to like actually shed a lot harder so it's it was just like a nice little um realization that there are people who are younger than you who are way better than you most of the time. There's always going to be someone better than there you. There will always be a Joey Alexander. There will, there will yeah. always be another Joey Alexander. That's the next standard. <laughs> and, and I eventually found out this this cat uh, has like perfect pitch and stuff, and he's been taking lessons forever and like transcribes solos like nonstop. Yeah, that'll do it. And I'm like, I, I wish I could. If do you that. learn enough of the language, you'll be able well, to play one way or the other. You know. But he's super cool now. We're buddies now, and we play together every now and then. That's awesome. But yeah, That's I was really just like... <gasps> I don't think I've ever been... I don't think I've ever really been cut by someone younger than me, but that's usually because I'm pretty much the youngest guy there all the time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been... The, the, worst, the worst I've ever been cut at a session probably was this is a story i actually didn't think of before but um at this super late night jam in a shitty basement bar in denver called the meadowlark and it's not shitty but it's like it's it's a basement bar with a very weird very weird kind of aesthetic and the outside of the building is all overgrown with vines and stuff anyways I was there, and um, Adam Deitch was playing drums. If you don't know who Adam Deitch is, he's the drummer from Lettuce. He lives in Denver. He comes to... Holy shit, I love Lettuce. Yeah, yeah. Adam is their drummer. And he does, like, electronic projects and production and all kinds of shit, but he's mostly known for for Lettuce. And uh, Benny Bloom comes to that jam sometimes, too, their trumpet player. But, um, yeah, I was playing... We were playing Mr. PC... And there were four tenor players. There were four tenor players all on the stage for this one tune. And there was this re- real old guy, you know, and he like 
sounded good. He sounded really good. You know, he sounded like an old jazz musician. And then he he takes a solo, and then I take a solo, and I'm kind of hanging, kind of hanging in there, and I get done, and I think I sound okay. And then this dude named uh, dude named Taylor Clay, who I hadn't met until this night, he's one of the most fucking technically brilliant tenor players that I know. He's fantastic. Comes up on the stage and takes this long solo, and it's just insane. Dude sounds like frickin' Michael Brecker. And then he starts, like, trading choruses and trading fours with the fourth guy that was on the stage, and they're both just to just the point of shutting me like, down, um. you know. And and the, and the, the worst part is, like, Adam is just visually way more impressed with them than doesn't give a shit about just, me. So okay. it's like, oh, I'll just whoops. go practice now. I thought I could play the okay. saxophone. Guess not. Yeah, I'm. I usually am the youngest person there, um, unless if like that one high school cat comes in and then he just basically shits on me, and I'm like, all right, sweet, more motivation to practice. <laughs> um, I have one more gig story that I can think okay. of right now. If you guys are willing Go. to hear it, um, so I play in this big band, uh, with this dude. How big? Who's a lead trumpet? Huh? The biggest band. A, okay. A band so I play in this big band. Big as um, your mom. <laughs> and we base it's basically run by this uh, trumpet player who is like one of the top or used to be one of the top trumpet players in the area. Um, he used to play like we used to have a professional big band with like that would bring in like uh, guest artists and stuff all the time for like twenty six years before I was born <laughs> or whatever. And so I'm playing in this big band. I play ten or two, and um, this dude, he's getting pretty old. He has like, oh, what's that? What's the uh, ear thing where you Tinnitus. have like a really, yeah, yeah. He has that um, super high pitch ringing in his ear. So he's he's pretty. He's getting kind of old and like is kind of just like loves to talk. So we're playing this like all city high school jazz concert and we're like the last band as like a guest band for all the parents and stuff yeah what he does is uh we get through like three tunes whatever it's cool it's cool it's we sound great everything so he finally gets to the mic and is like okay i should probably tell tell him about the band and everything he's like he he fucking talks for like 10 minutes straight and you can tell the crowd is like moving around in their seats and they're like uh should we just like leave or like and the the lead alto player i'm sitting next to is just like tempted to just yell out his name be like yo come on let's start the next tune he's he's just going on and on about how his wife is in the hospital and like how he's like oh man this this next tune is dedicated to her and all that on and it's just we've gone through so much and i'm like yeah dude you said it twice now we're we're good so it we just finally means get that through. Much to him. Yeah, I mean, it was cool to talk about it. Yeah, but he literally said the same story twice, basically. And so finally, we get into the tune. I think it's "Love for Sale" or no? Ooh. That's not the tune. It was uh. "Hospital Blues," and then we played "Love for Sale" after that. Mm. Good tune. But "Love um, for Sale" with the entire form and a big band. Yeah, there's like a couple arrangements of it. Hmm. I can't remember who it's by, but it's it's actually pretty good. Um. And then, so, we get done with the concert. It's, like, 9 p.m. This thing started at 7, and that's, like, concerts are usually an hour to an hour and a half, like, for high schools, and it's, like, 9 o'clock, so it's already been two hours. And he's like, hey, everyone, who wants to hear an encore? And everybody's like, uh, yeah. For uh, my girl! I I, I guess. She means so much to me. I mean, none of my kids are up on stage. I just want to go home, you know? Yeah, he's like, we're going to do another encore for my wife. And so we play two fucking more tunes, and it's like 9.30. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. Wow. So that dude's like a, has a reputation of just like <laughs> taking way too fucking long. Like his gig timing is so bad. We'll be in like rehearsal, and he's like, yeah, we only got fo- 45 minutes, uh, so I scheduled 12 tunes for us to play, and we're like, yo, dude, no, we can't do this, no. And then he's like, all right, to close us out, Here's pick up the pieces. And there's just forty. Oh fucking my minutes. god! Fuck that tune. I played that tune like six times this 
entire year. Our jazz band will not stop like playing that tune. Here's oh. Chameleon, and I'm gonna let half the players in the high school big band solo for 32 bars. Everybody in the high school all-state honor band gets eight bars. Line up. Let's play this for oh 20 gosh. minutes straight. <laughs> that actually happened. <laughs> at a, I'm, at a, I'm uh, not surprised. All state. I was I was counseling for the Minnesota All-State, and the jazz band and like band whatever. Yeah. They all came up and played for my professor's band. Oh my god, it was so fucking long. Wow. When it I was, was actually picking up the pieces too. When I was in high school, um, I actually met one of my current, like, really good friends, really excellent drummer through this. But um, when I was in high school and played in the Colorado Springs All-City Jazz Band, we did a um, free jazz smash mouth all-star as an intro to our, our concert. It was, that's absolutely amazing it was a very very good it was actually horrible but it was really funny basically i passed one of the solo mics back and forth between the lead alto and the berry player i was playing second tenor and i passed one of the solo mics back and forth and they did like a a, a poetry reading of all-star somebody once told me <laughs> the world was gonna roll me and i ain't the sharpest tool in the shit she was looking so kind of dumb in, 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 in that sort of fashion and that sort of kind of monotone way. Oh, my God. And then we just, the guitar player started playing the song and we just jammed on it. That sounds like what free jazz is minutes. supposed to be, a fucking, uh, you know. An entire big band of high schoolers fucking around over Smash Mouth All-Star. <laughs> well, well I've been also just like reading. rebelling, <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like, you know. F saying fuck you and then playing utter garbage yes the proper approach and then say it's art. um does anybody else have any more stories because i also just remembered another one i have i have one a short one um do it hold up what are you saying wyatt nah it's, it's, don't worry about oh, it giving me the the smooth whispers um no in uh so, Wyan and I may, met off a, a shitposting group. The shitposting of Jazz to Come. Go check it out. But anyway, um, uh, I went to one of Wyatt's jams. <laughs> and I'll never forget and this. And he didn't bring no, his no, no, horn. No, 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 not that one. Shut the fuck up. We don't talk about that one. He didn't bring his horn <laughs> to a jam. I, I'm vibing Andy for not bringing his horn. Rule two. No, Rule I'm two. <laughs> I'm talking about the second time. The second time. And I wish I had recorded it. I will never forget. So what What was that? We, we were, You guys were just playing for parents, really, when Jazz 1 played? Or uh, the grad band? What? Remember Which the, one were the you first, at? The big band concert? Yeah, remember the first one? Yeah, the first big band concert of the year. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know yeah, what you're talking yeah, about yeah, now. Yeah, yeah this so, wasn't a jam. This was a... Not a, a jam. No, it wasn't a A university jam. big band concert. Yeah, so the people there... Where people, uh, you know, the parents and it was it was like uh, jazz two one and then the grad band. So you know, you you got some like cutie parents that, you know, they're they're just there to see their kids play, and then you have you have some people like a couple of my friends have to do a concert report for one of their exams. They have to go and list. They're forced. They're just forced to listen to jazz and write a report on it, which actually I have to do now. But anyway. Uh, this is this is like the second time Wyatt and I met. Anyway, uh, I was I was sitting in the audience, and I'm being a real fucking dick bag like I usually am. So whenever someone comes on that I know, I fucking scream their name uh, once they walk on, and you know. So Wyatt's playing. He's playing the plays, and we keep making eye contact <laughs> and just kind of laughing. And Wyatt takes his solo. <laughs> and, and, like, so people in the crowd already know I'm pretty loud. They're like, who the fuck is, is this guy, like, drunk or high or something? Because I was just yelling, like, whenever someone came on. I wasn't doing it during the, while they are playing. But Wyatt takes his solo. And I don't know, what what was it on? It was, it was like, a piece that our, it was a tune that our director wrote called Big Alice. Was that the one based on Freedom Jazz Dance? It's kind of based on Freedom yeah. Jazz Dance. It's got a bunch bunch of fourthy shit in it, but it's all just, you know, 
modal Mixolydian. Anyway, um, Wyatt Wyatt fucking is playing, and he quotes. I think it was three different Charlie Parker. Yes. Uh, licks. Yes, it's an F, so it was super easy to quote various Parker hits. And he was he kept almost playing the lick. And like <laughs> I was like, is that the lick? Was that the funny meme? Was it it? <laughs> and he fucking he's standing up playing the solo. So he fucking looks at me, like face like turns his body all the way toward me and fucking just slams the lick at the end of his solo oh and i am God. laughing so hard i'm crying everyone in the fucking audience is looking at me because no one gets the fucking joke um and i i was i was actually just crying i was laughing so loud and all these people are like what the fuck is this guy's problem and that was i wish i had filmed it i will never forget that day the rest of my and life. And that's how you got kicked out of the place. <laughs> yeah. For being too disruptive. I ha- I have gotten kicked out of a lot of places. Uh, yeah, so... And then, of course, I'm now a fucking huge shit poster, And now I run a podcast, so I'm doing a little better for myself. Hell yeah. It's a jazz podcast, Slight so, you know, we got that, but... Uh, whatever. Uh, so, Race, you want to lead us out on your last story we'll close with that yeah sure um so i have like one really short one so that trumpet boy i was talking about earlier at the high school thing the gig um he's kind of infamous in the high school area actually because my old high school used to do um like guest artist things and like they would bring people in that were from our high school or like from the area to play on this certain concert and like be like a little guest soloist thing so the year after I graduate, um, he's brought in, and he plays Stardust. Do you guys know that chart? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like super high trumpet thing, whatever, but it's like kind of like a ballad sort of. Yeah. So the very last note, I think, is like, I don't know what it would be on trumpet, but it's really fucking high, and he fucks it up hard. He, he cracks it and, like, undershoots it or yeah, he undershoots it. It just is awful. Oh. So they end the chart, and then so he immediately runs up to the mic and just like, hey, does anybody want to hear the ending one more time? Isn't that just, doesn't this band just sound great? And everybody's like, no, no. not really. Good job, <laughs> no. guy. So he's like, okay, all right, start at letter C. One, two, ready, go. And they play it again, and he plays it just like a little bit better. It still fucks up a little bit. And it was just super awkward and uncomfy. Anyway, next story. My mom, she's got a friend or whatever that she works with that's also, like, a musician on the side. She plays, like, electric violin or some shit. And, like, she's, like, I don't know, did pageants when she was younger (laughs) or something? Electric violin on the side. Yeah. So, you know, this is a really good... (laughs) <laughs> a really good, uh, a really good story because there's a an electric violin involved for someone who just works with my mom casually. Um, so basically, works with your mom casually, if I know, if you know what I mean. No, <laughs> it's it's mutual, northwestern mutual to be precise. Ah, gotcha. Um, <laughs> get out of here, chat. Oh my gosh, so mean. Um. <laughs> So basically, she's like she she's big into like I don't know like philanthropy or like fundraising and sh- and shit. So she's doing this concert at like a pizzeria, kind of bar pizzeria kind of place that has live music every now and then. And so it's like a fundraiser for like I don't know, let's just say cancer or something. And my mom is like, "Hey, so my friend's playing. I've never heard her before, but they want you to come and sit in with them." And I'm like, "Okay, sure." Do they know jazz tunes? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, sweet. I'll just bring my bring my real book or something and like call tunes. So I get in there, and I listen to them. They're not super great. Violin is like six strings, and it's kind of out of tune, and the sound quality is just like not good. And and they're just playing like thirty second violin jigs or whatever. And I'm like, all right, this is gonna be great. <laughs> so I go up there. And the piano player dude rolls up, pulls up like when I'm about to play because he was late or something. He's wearing like all black with some white like Asics like tennis shoes, and he's got some fucking sunglasses on. And he pulls up to the keyboard, pops the sunglasses down, and I'm like, 
oh shit, this guy's like the real deal. He's like <laughs> Stevie Wonder or some shit. He's got the he's got the sunglasses. He's got the look, but he also has the shoes. So you know he doesn't really care that much. <laughs> but he cares enough to have yeah. sunglasses. So he's I'm good like, enough, okay, he's good enough. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, hey man, what tunes do you know? And before I even finish my sentence, I hear, boo do do do. He starts oh playing gosh. this chameleon oh, bass line no. on his keyboard, and I'm like, oh no. Was there a bassist? <laughs> was there a bassist in this band? No, it was weird. I didn't really, like, there, I, I don't know. I, it was just basically me and a keyboard player, basically. It was just me and him, just and then the violinist and, and the drummer was, like, sitting out or something. Yeah. So I just was like, okay, fuck it. I guess I'm back in high school now. So I start playing chameleon. It's all good. Try to figure out how to end it, play the head out or whatever. And we end it. It's cool, whatever. He actually sounded okay. And so the next chart, I'm like, okay, let's play like an actual like chart. And I was like, do you know rhythm changes? And he's like, oh, what's that? I'm like, um, I don't know. It's like a really standard, I guess, chord progression. <laughs> And I was like, you got a real book? That's not a good sign. One, six, two, five. And I'm like, uh, do you have a real book? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, go to page 300 something. Just let's look at Olio. And I was like, okay, do you think he can play that? And he like looks it over and it's like, oh yeah, totally. This looks easy. So I count off the tempo. It's like 200 or something, whatever. You know, like how you'd normally do like rhythm changes, like up tempo swing. Olio, yeah. Yeah, Olio. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, and as soon as I, I count it off, it's he seems down with it or whatever, and I start playing the head, you know, bop da bop da 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 bop da da, and he just shits the bed immediately, like half a bar. It's like goo 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 goo, ah, <laughs> like he immediately gets lost. I get to the bridge, and just kind of like improvise, hoping that he might get it. And I before we could even finish the main head, I just stopped playing, and I was like. Maybe we should do a blues. Do you know what a blues is? <laughs> and it was like the keyboard kid all over again. Oh my god. What a he luckily could figure out a blues, but uh it was it was just not a super great experience. But anyway, those are my gig stories. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> those... Don't wear sunglasses to an indoor gig if you can't cut it. Yeah, unless you're just gonna say super that much. fucking cool. No, the, the yeah, correct approach is you put sunglasses on your upright bass. You, like, take a little <laughs> bit of masking tape and tape sunglasses to the headstock of your bass, and then everybody knows you're killing. <laughs> that and on that like... bombshell, it's time to end. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> it's also like, uh, like John Dart, or Joe Dart. What the fuck? Joe John Dart. Dart. No, like jo John, John Dart, Dart on the Shut Fender the, bass. What the fuck up? It's like Joe Dart, you know, all you have to do is wear the sunglasses, and if you bob your head and, like, act like you're fucking jamming hard, it'll it'll trick up most people. And just play 16th note rhythms on the same note on a root. Just ba get it. This is a, this is a beasty solo. This is so beastly. Mm. I hate those captions. He's it's like not getting even that good. in it. He is well, digging in it. Oh, he's, he's so good. I do think he has really good like I solos every now like and then. Dart as a bass player. Oh I yeah, I like love Joe him. Dart. The last but video I, I saw, the Beastly solo, I did not like at all. But I love I his know, bass. I know it's lame. And to be it's fair, the so... name of the they named that song Beastly that he does the big solo on. That's the name of the tune. And it was just like okay, he's just grooving. Like I wouldn't say this is Beastly. Like chill out. <laughs> Anyway, Joe Dart's cool, other than that one video. A hot take from Race. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on the woodshed. It's been fun. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll have more giggers on, hopefully. Hopefully we'll have more people on. <laughs> anyway, this has been the woodshed with Andy, Wyatt, and Race. Uh... Have a good night. Make all the right decisions in all areas of your Make life. Good decisions, please. I've been planning my life in movies. I've been biding my time all the while. Chasing the lights, the camera, the action. But I'm still waiting on the song. Just a late night
If you were there, would you care? Would you tell me to stay? Oh, tell me to.